when talking to you know the CEO of yes, Life Healthcare, like and he was disappointed that the market was disappointed. What are your thoughts well, on the, the, the share price reaction look, today? The results were fine. There was nothing wrong with the results, but the problem is it's a 24 PE ratio, so it's at a 60% premium, 70% premium to the market, and the results didn't live up to investors' expectations, so the share price came down. And I mean, it's, that's not, it's not to reflect that the company's done badly, yeah. just the share price was too high for what was, what was delivered. That stock up 60% this oh, year, massive. so please, yeah, you know, I mean, what, everyone must put that into context. And, and of course, the company doesn't drive the share price up, investors drive the share price up, and they just drove it up too much. The results didn't support the share price, but it's been a fantastic investment. And then of but you know, anything above a 20 PE ratio, you've got to deliver not just good results, you've got to deliver exceptional results to justify the PE ratio, and that's what's happened here. And Netcare falling. Netcare exactly you know, opposite. They're exactly saying, opposite, look, yeah. we've got trouble in the UK. We've got refinancing issues. Profit warning, and basically. They to, yeah, today. oh, definitely. And they had to take some write downs, accounting write downs. But that doesn't matter. They're still write downs. And people always say, oh no, it's accounting entry. But they paid money for it. It sits on the balance sheet at a value, and you got to write it down. So it is in fact a real transaction. Mm -hmm. Now the share price goes up simply because they had a 14 PE, and that's the difference. Is that the market was expecting worse news. So that price up, I mean, is up quite strongly today. Yep. Now, just looking at the outlook that came through from Life Healthcare, they say they continue to see increased demand for hospital services. Uh, high incidence of disease will, you know, drive mm. that. Um, you know, increasing uh, aged people. Um, yep. They talk about preferred network arrangements specifically for high, for uh, Life Healthcare, and of course, growing medical aid population. So there we go. That they put yeah, down the, the investment the macro, case. Did you buy into that? The macro story is very good because I mean, the more and more people getting more and more higher salaries the more they're going to go into medical because the government just can't supply it. And I don't know what's going to happen with the national health scheme. Uh, I've just got no idea. I don't think the government can afford it, quite frankly. Uh, and I think they will eventually come to that realization. So the, 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 let's call it the, the non-statutory, the non-government macroeconomic environment. It's actually quite positive for all the healthcare providers. And when you look at their results, there's nothing wrong in South Africa. They, all of them have reported good results. But as my question to Mike, I've got grave concerns about government's interference in this healthcare, healthcare story. You know, we've seen single exit pricing in the pharmaceutical mm -hmm. side. I mean, that is, that is in effect uh, socialism. And maybe the government's got to do it to deliver, you know, uh, cheap healthcare to everyone. But I just think they're going to just squash profits out of yeah. the healthcare system. And they're going to give you essentially price regulation. You're only going to be able to charge so much, almost like a flat rate. You can only charge so much for that and so much for this. And so I'm very worried. Of all the companies, I'll actually take Life Healthcare simply because it's the lowest, uh, uh, not, not, not Life Healthcare, Netcare, because it's the lowest PE. Yeah, I and mean, you talk about you know you're saying that he couldn't even compete on government uh, yeah. staff and salaries, and that of course very, is very perhaps would come as a surprise for me. Yeah. There's a very good reason why they've all gone to India and Dubai and the UK and Switzerland. They might not have all been successful, but there's a very good reason why they're all diversifying out of South Africa because I think SA is X growth. So let's talk about okay. I mean that of course yeah. is quite a quite a bold statement on, yeah. on the healthcare sector. Let's talk about the banking sector because yes, we've had you know Aubrey. big headlines this week. First round, uh, the biggest bank by market cap uh, when oh, it comes yeah. to Standard yeah. Banks and the race between a, those two. First rounds had a wonderful run. I'm I mean thirty say, over thirty round yeah, once again it's today. Up again and, and the banks were the only green on the market today. I mean they were all up today. Now they've had a fantastic run, and I mean we've had this. And these things go in cycle. A couple of years ago, First Rand was just no one wanted to even mention its name, and Standard Bank couldn't be touched. And then now it's exactly the opposite. First Rand's riding the crest of the wave, and Standard Bank is the dog. Now, this will all change eventually, but so, so is there you, value, yes or no? Yeah, I mean, that, how do you play the bank sector rally? Uh, do you do buy one of the individual stocks and take a view on that I, company? Do you buy look, an ETF where perhaps you get exposure to all the banks? I mean, it's how a do you very do hard, it's a very difficult question to answer, simply because at the end of the day, they're all driven by the same factors. Mm -hmm. So in theory, you can buy an ETF and just take the banking sector. But every now and again, one individual bank will get walloped. And you can name it Nedbank in the 80s, APSA in 2003 with the UNIFA, Standard Bank, First Rand with all their global losses and global write-offs. So every now and again, some internal factor really, really comes in and hammers a particular bank, whereas the other ones do well because they pick up market share. Now, 
The banks have had a fantastic run. I think the banks is the best performing index this year. And my little saying is, you know, the banks are the new retailers. They can virtually do no wrong. Their share prices just are going up. Um, but at 13, 14 PE, you're okay. You don't have to worry yet. The valuations have not hit massively high levels. So they're not overvalued by any stretch of the imagination. But they were really good value two and a half years ago. But do you ago. have one pick in the sector? Oh, no, I've got, I've got, I've got first rank. First you know, rank, two and a half yeah. years ago, we were punting the banks here like there was no tomorrow saying these things are dirt cheap. No one was interested. And they have been a fantastic performer. But don't get too excited now. You know, the, the easy money has already been made.